Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to one of the most unique, innovative, and realistic theme parks ever featured on this channel. All themed around that of Greek mythology. It is by far one of the most highly detailed, compact theme parks with some of the best visuals and coaster integration. This is absolutely a must watch theme park. So stay tuned and we'll get right on into it. Hey, yo, my poor and it goes to friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. Today, we're looking at Mythica, land of myths and legends, created by Dwarren Ice, an expert in this community. And here they say, Hi, Johnny, this park has been in the making for over three years with the intention to put as much detail in as possible on a relatively small area, all based upon stories of the Grand Library and librarians. After venturing the park, and hearing all the stories, one question remains. Are the librarians the good guys or actually the bad? All right, three years in the making with the intention to put as much detail in as possible is definitely showing here. As you guys can see from the B-roll, look how incredibly detailed this park is. And also tons and tons of realism. Everything has been carefully crafted. We have staff facilities. All the details are there. Nothing has been forgotten. While it may not be an end to end mega park that you guys are normally used to seeing this did take the creator three years to do one of the most detailed parks we have ever seen so this is definitely a quality versus quantity type situation now there is a whole backstory uh it says our story begins with the grand library all myths and legends have been collected and stored in the grand library for centuries under the protection of the hidden location and mountain like entrance the library has always remained safe from those with ill intentions being a librarian in the grand library is a great honor but you'll never know until they reach out to you over time the library has conducted a lot of research into making more myths and legends but the mission is proof that they are real to be able to do so they've created a device called the chronos this device allowed a single person to travel through time and space to validate if the specific myth or legend is in fact true as the grand library suspected most of them were were myth or true <laughs> We're what? Uh, the news traveled fast through the entire library and everyone wanted to go on such a journey. So uh, that shot of the spinning chairs, I think that's the Kronos. Accommodating this soon proved to be a challenge and the employees grew envious of each other. The only solution was to create a bigger, better Kronos. They built it just outside the library to make sure they would have enough space. Upon starting a new Kronos, they discovered they could also bring things back to this world or more exactly make a copy of them in present day wow instead of letting employees travel back in time they would just copy and bring the stories back to life naturally in a controlled and safe environment in time the garden and library has turned into a mysterious area with greek and scandinavian mythology having set up a safe per perimeter the grand library decided to invite civilians to experience the myths and legends for the themselves aka you guys and me <laughs> you are ready to venture through time and discover various myths and legends consider this your invitation to the library uh, experience it yourself by entering the garden or join the librarian's apprentice on the infinity coaster or a journey through space and time wowzers holy good googly moogly this is awesome i love the, the extra detail got into the backstory which matches that of what we're seeing here it's all really incredible stuff so why don't we delay no further and get right on into the park tour okay before we uh actually go into the park entrance which is over there i just want to show you guys the amount of attention to detail and realism put into the surrounding park we have the highways the bridges the parking lots we even have these little villages and uh i don't even know what's going on over here we have the buses uh you i didn't get to really show this in any of the footage or anything but i did let three thousand guests in and they were coming from these bus stops the spawners are put in the sp bus stops and they are walking across all these crosswalks at each of the junctions of the parking lot they were coming in over here over here from all angles then they were walking up the sidewalks and i just thought that was like a really nice touch just to 
an extra bit of detail that was completely unnecessary, but definitely appreciated. Uh, I love this gigantic giga coaster going over the parking lot as well. Something to look forward to, to uh, stretch out beyond the park a little bit later on. So incredible stuff already. You see all this, the staff facilities, everything's been man-made, but brought back from history, time travel, I guess, and then amped up to be turned into a theme park. What a cool concept. So we get our tickets here. I don't know why we have Mexalente here. Uh, there wasn't any images for me to download, but there was a whole lot of Theme Maker Toolkit, which is custom assets created from the community in Blender and all that. This, uh, oh, look at the integration of the ATM. That's quite nice. But welcome to the Mythica Land of Myths and Legends. Very, very cool. Let's go on in and see what we can discover here today. Wow, kicking things off. We are inside the Grand Library, which we read in the backstory. I really like this. There's even uh, some stairs. I guess that's an exit to a ride that we saw cross over this bridge. Very, very cool stuff. The Librarian's Apprentice is this guy, and I guess that is the first coaster of the day. Maybe I should be uh, doing this at night, make it a little bit more immersive. Wow. Very, very cool. The Vikings Library? Wowee. Uh, what are we up for here? I'm assuming it's that coaster we saw right as we entered the park. It's a... a a gas lower. I'm grabbing the scenery. Here we go. The Librarian's Apprentice, Typhoon Infinite. Here's a look at all the coaster stats. We're looking at about a one kilometer long coaster with 50 miles per hour as its max speeds, seven inversions, a little bit of airtime on this as well. Wow. Okay, I, I think we're going to go at both day and night. I'll do the tradi traditional seat view for night, and then we'll do like a, a track view for, for daytime here. Wow, a bit of a time travel coaster taking us through the different eras of mythology. Very, very cool. Look at the guy up there. Oh my goodness, that is such a cool touch. <laughs> the operator up top. So while I had this set to nighttime, as we went outside, it was in fact daytime. And that is because the creator has used a day-night sequencer to control the time of day for us. But we did have some flailing arms, so I know sometimes that bothers you guys. So I'll let you experience that once again. Um, with the track view so you can get the feel of the coaster itself. 
and we can take a, another look at some of these details going through these eras. But a fantastic coaster overall, a fantastic creation, great storytelling, environmental storytelling as well. Like I said at the top of the video, some of the best integration that I have ever seen between coaster to theme park. I, I would say as a small bit of feedback, even getting the B-roll and uh, just experiencing the first hand a little bit of the park here, uh, that there's a big, big lack of audio throughout the whole park, which is a bit of a shame because I, I feel like this is one of the most intricate and detailed parks I've ever seen. And the one thing that would really take it over the top is either some voice acting on some of these rides, uh, like that story that I read off. That could have been told on a... Uh, people mover or some sort of uh, tour ride and we get to listen to that whole thing as we're going on an experience and then we get to unfold things a little bit more as we go on and just a little bit of uh, music here for the different areas I know it's a little bit tricky to make your own soundtracks but to have that go as we're going into the Viking area switching over to some Viking music as we're going into the different Greek eras we get a little bit of a, a Greek music and there is that there are those types of music soundtracks in Vanilla Planet Coaster, so it would be possible to do that with just the uh, default in-game soundtracks. Um, but you can always find some really great resources online for royalty-free music as well. So I think that would have been the one thing to just take it over the top for me because the visuals are just incredible and I really wish the audio matched that because it would just bring it to a 10 out of 10 perfect creation in my opinion. But I will reserve judgment for now. That is just my first impressions based off of, you know, walking into the park and going on the first coaster. Uh, maybe things will change as we dig a little bit deeper. But so far, visually speaking, absolutely incredible. Over the top. I just cannot believe the amount of detail put into all of this. And it, it's outstanding. It, it This right here, as they said in their uh, submission, took them three years to make. You want this type of detail? You're going to have to work for it. And... Uh, and in this case, it took three years to do that. And that is what I love about visiting these parks, you guys, because we get to bask in the glory of their finished product that would otherwise take us three years to create something this spectacular. So shout out to Dwarven Ice. Thank you for this amazing submission and giving us the joy and privilege of checking it out here today. This must be the Kronos. All these people in the chair swing are traveling through time right now. <laughs> we are spinning up the Kronos, getting ready to go back in time or maybe into the future. Who knows? Really cool concept there. Now, based off the backstory, they said that the original Kronos was in the lib the library, which we just, the Grand Library, yeah, we just came out of. So I'm assuming that coaster we went on was the original Kronos. And then they built a bigger one here, right? It all, it all fits. I really like that storytelling developed into your theme park there. Really great stuff. Absolutely amazing. So I didn't get a shot of this. Can I zoom in? No, I can't zoom in from here. There is a, um, Horror Heights inside of that Hades Tower. And I was really impressed by that. We're gonna go take a closer look at that in just a second. But I thought that integration of a Horror Heights was probably the best I've ever seen in a theme park. There's a lot of uh, really cool things in this park. And I'm surprised I've never seen anything like it. So here we go, we got the Zeus. Everything is like uh, based off of a different character from mythology. Unfortunately, with that being said, there is a coaster called Odin that I cannot get to work uh, because of the mods that this creator used. And it appears to be that pretty much all of the uh, coasters in this park use mods, which makes them extra innovative. And that's why they're so spectacular. So going the extra mile, getting the custom assets from the community pages with the TMTK, and then also downloading the mods to uh, make the coasters a little bit over the top and extra creative. Unfortunately, it came with one coaster not working. Be sure to test these things out before uh, you send them in. Try to send them to a friend that doesn't have mods installed on their computer or give instructions on your Steam page on how I would go about installing those to get them to work because there is no information given. So here we go. We got the Zeus coaster, 1.7 kilometers in length, 77 miles per hour, 11 airtime counts with 13 seconds of 
of airtime. Wow. That might be one of the most airtime uh, durations I have ever seen on a coaster. I feel like I've said that before, but 13 seconds of airtime? Oh, you know what this is? This is the one that goes around the whole parking lot. That makes a lot of sense then. Well, prepare to soar, guys. Prepare to be lifted out of your seats. We're going to do day and night for this. And this one is going up the lift hill right now. I want to try a couple different perspectives. We're going to obviously do the track view as well for uh, daytime. This could work pretty fine. It's not obscuring too much of the screen. So yeah, let's try this out. And because it's at the very back of the park, as you can see here, we're going to get a good look at all of the nighttime lighting spanning across the entirety of the park and parking lot, which is pretty cool. So let's enjoy this nighttime experience. And then we'll flip it over to daytime for track view for the, the smoothest ride experience possible. Let's go. Good googly moogly. This coaster does something very interesting. I, I, I want to guess that those are uh, custom supports because they come so close to the coaster track that they create near misses and head chopper moments that if the, if the coaster got that close to the track, normally they auto disappear or get auto adjusted. So I'm going to guess that they are in fact custom supports. In fact, I can already tell because they're not selected. Yeah, look at that. 4,252 hand placed custom supports across that entire entirety of the 1.7 kilometers of that giga coaster that is freaking ridiculous and i love it definitely appreciate that it created for a unique experience for the actual pov itself I love it. So now we're going to switch it over to track view. We could probably zip it to the top here and uh, off we go. You can almost feel the airtime on that Giga Coaster. Absolutely love it. My goodness. While we did stumble across the biggest and most badass coaster in this park right away, I don't, uh, I have a suspicion that it might not end up being the best. Really depends on what you consider the best, right? Everybody has different reasons for liking coasters. And I personally favor integration a little bit more. As you can see from uh, this coaster here, that was the one we went on first, the time travel. The way it comes in and out of the terrain like that, weaves in and around the path work. You're walking underneath the coaster. The coaster's going underneath you. 
the integration of that is just stunning, absolutely stunning. And we can come to expect that from all of the coasters in this park. So if you're a big fan of theming, then uh, I think there's still plenty more for us to look forward to here. That is a very cool font there that I don't know how to pronounce. Agion, God of Violent Seas. Okay, let's uh, go to nighttime and hit up some Violent Seas. Now, I'm going to assume that this is the Water Cascade Coaster, but to go into the queue from here, when we're like a mile away from it, is very interesting indeed, but I like it. You're taking us on a journey with these queues, and uh, it's really quite fascinating. Yeah, it's gotta be the Water Cascade. There it is right there. And then uh, I guess the Hades is the drop tower. So maybe we'll stumble across that after we go on this, depending on where the exit shoots us off. But this is really freaking intricate. Wow. Okay, we have arrived. Custom uh, gates here, love to see it. What are we dealing with? Building 52, where's the uh, operator? Where are, you, where are you hiding our operator? <laughs> there, I'll just grab the track. Oh, he's inside here. <laughs> Hello. All right. God of Violent Seas. About a kilometer in length, 51 miles per hour is its top speeds. A good amount of airtime on this for a water ride and about a 200 second duration. Well, let me, uh, yeah, a kilometer is still pretty long, but the experience will slow down as it will convert itself into a water ride at times. So definitely going to be an interesting experience overall. I think we should go daytime for this one. Uh, I have a suspicion that they've used the uh, sequencer again for this. So we might, yeah, we'll probably get a, a shift between day and night. Yeah, quick little sneak peek there. Uh, this is a, a tricky one to choose a perspective on. But I think we're gonna have to do this. This should be the best. But again, yeah, the ambience. I feel like a little bit of creepy music for this uh, could go a long way. Absolutely. All right, let's check this out. Holy freaking Toledo's. What an incredible, stunning atmosphere and visuals on that water cascade experience. 
definitely making these coasters into experiences that match that of the backstory. A phenomenal experience front to back. Each and every one of these coasters offers something very unique. I love it. Absolutely love it. And that door even opened up for us. What a nice touch. Oh my goodness. This is great. So that is the uh, the coaster we just went on and the queue is over here. I love that. I really do. It stretches all the way out over there. We went underground all the way up for the queue. Freaking amazing. And somewhere around here, Persephone, I guess that's this uh, flat ride. Love all the extra flowers and integration you put into that. Amazing garden work here. Or wait. Yeah, is that it? Yeah, this is the queue here. Stunning. But this is Hades. Free, free fall ride. It is our horror heights. And I want to try to show you guys. Let's do the fast forward. Okay, there it is. Only three little people on here. Wait, am I, uh... What, what, what speed am I on here? There we go. <laughs> I think it even goes up higher. I think it does a double drop. If I speed it up again, there it goes. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Amazing integration there. So we saw it from the perspective of the uh, the guests outside. Now we get to walk through this, uh, again, another amazing intricate queue and go experience it for ourselves. Not a lot of people in queue for this one. At the very back of the park here, there's too many uh, amazing coasters that the guests want to go on. Oh my god, the fog effects in here are really cool. Look at all the uh, pipe work and all this on the sides here. Oh my goodness. This is really cool. What is this? Oh, the guest numbers. Stand here. We can fit 18 people on this ride. Oh my god. I guess we, we better wait to be seated. It hasn't uh, quite taken off yet. Look at those chains holding up the chandelier. I like the operator uh, standing out front here. All these walls as well. These are custom. It really uh, helps add to the atmosphere going on down here. And there we go. Are they getting off? They should be. There we go. If I could click the thing. There's so much integration that clicking these rides is actually challenging. I can't even do it. And I can't find the operators because they're so well integrated. Let me go underneath. No. Oh, I got it. Okay. <laughs> so it's going to be, uh, there's not a lot of stats for us to look at here. It is a uh, horror heights. We'll sit in the middle seat because this guy seems to be the tallest. This lady. And uh, off we freaking go. Hey, we got music. <laughs> what a difference it makes. Wow, we smashed right through. Uh, that was a great little uh, touch there. One thing I would have changed, um, 
there was a, a use of the day-night sequencer on that as well. I would have liked it so when we go up the first time, we look at the park, the doors open up, it's daytime. We drop back down and then the demon does its magic. And then we go up and it's nighttime. And then you maybe add some of those spooky teal lights turned on. So it's like the uh, the world has changed. Hades has taken over. Uh, that would have been the, the one thing that I would have loved to see as a, a creative touch added on there. I was actually going into that ride thinking because we're kind of going into the whole um, Poseidon water style area. And I was thinking, how are you going to make this feel like Hades, the god of, uh, what is it, the god of death or the underworld? Something like that. I was wondering how you were going to convey that or if we were going to see a lot of that underworld and death and all that. And we in fact did. The lighting was amazing. We, we saw skeletons and demons and all sorts of stuff being risen from the dead. I didn't open up any of these uh, shops. I will say to the creators submitting their stuff, uh, originally when I opened up this park to do the video, it was set as a scenario. And that can be often frustrating because sometimes these parks take like 20 minutes to load up. And after waiting for it to load up, I have to save it as a custom park and then open it as a sandbox so that I can now let the guests in. Otherwise, we would have had zero guests in today's experience. Um, and I don't really have any control over the experience. So when you're sending in your parks in, definitely save them as sandboxes, submit the sandbox, and then you don't have to let the guests in. I can do that because I know you guys want to make it so people with uh, any sort of computer can load these up. I love the lighting on this uh, Roctopus, by the way. And then um, open up all your rides and your facilities and your burger joints and all that, your vendors. So here's a look at the park at night a little bit. Also, custom cobblestone. We saw this Floor Creek. We saw this a while ago. And it, I think last week's park spotlight, and I was really impressed by it. So it goes to show what you could do with these uh, custom assets that people are building. The Maker Toolkit has been a massive expansion to the game, and it's really uh, elevating the experience overall. Everywhere we turn, we see some custom stuff. No entry, but everyone's going through here. You can put barriers in so they they won't go through. You just stuff them in the floor. Uh, great little um, play park. And we got the uh, chair chair ride, or uh, the airplane ride over here. I kind of want to check this one out. These flat rides also have really incredible cues, which you don't see every day. This one's taken off right now. Icaros. Off we go. Get a nice look at the park from up here. So that Black Coaster Odin, I can't get to work, unfortunately, and I'm really sad about that because it appears to be one of the best-looking coasters in this park. But we'll go take a look at it at the very least, and I'll show you what's going on with it. But still plenty more to check out, I think. We haven't been to that back half of the park here. We're back at the Kronos. Let's cross over and see what we got going on over here. We got a whirly rig there. I think this is more of a, a Viking area. The drop tower over there. Uh, dive coaster, I mean. Look at this, dropping through the bone trenches. Very cool. Oh yeah, the Junior. I got some shots of this in the uh, B-roll. I thought this was one of the coolest, most well-integrated... Is it, is it Loki? It is Loki. <laughs> coolest Juniors I have ever seen. I'm getting lost now. I saw the Loki sign and now I'm over here at uh, Agar, the Rapid Ride. Okay, well we're gonna go on it because it's right here. Switch it tonight again. Yeah, so we have at least a few more rides based off of uh, what I can see firsthand at a glance. Oh, a spinning coaster as well. Plenty more to check out here. I definitely uh, love this concept of everything being so like intertwined and claustrophobic that I really have no idea what I'm getting in line for until I start walking the queue and discover that along the way. It's uh, 
everything is so compact and dense that all the queues are kind of next to each other and well integrated. It's really quite cool. So I think we're going to go daytime on this because it is a river rapids and uh, it's 130 seconds in duration, 300 meters in length. Let's check it out. Here we go. Yeah, so far everything in this park has been just remarkably visually stunning. And um, I'm surprised Dora and I didn't do any custom music or anything. I'm looking at the page again, just in disbelief that there's no custom audio. And in fact, there's no links or anything. I would have gone with just whatever the game has. They have some fun mytho mythology and fantasy music that could have really elevated some of these rides. But I don't know, maybe it's just a personal preference for me. I feel like ambience can really elevate a creation. I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know down below. But for me, I, I prefer having a little bit. It doesn't have to be on every single ride and coaster. A few speakers in the queue with some setting the tone, especially... Uh, matching that of the really cool and intricate cues and then when we're on a bit of a more fun adventure ride here for the river rapids uh you could do something a little bit more adventure-y although now it's quickly getting grim grim dark in here but i have to say like gotta give credit where credit is due regardless of the ambience lacking a little bit the um the ambience of the actual settings the atmosphere, if you will, over the top. I I couldn't have even imagined scaling this park up any larger. The three years of detail shows on every single one of these rides. Absolutely. It's very rare that you see rides this thoroughly crafted, this thoroughly detailed, start to finish like they've all been. I mean, other than the one that went around the parking lot, which was a fun, almost bonus coaster, uh, every one of these rides have, have been over the top, impeccable creativity. Absolutely. Okay, a short River Rapids, but again, insanely detailed. I kind of want to show you guys from a bird's eye view. You get the longhouse here, interweaving, wrapping around a spinning coaster, going through all these ruins, indoor facilities there. When you're down here, you feel like you're in a world. When you zoom out, <laughs> Realism. It's all staff facilities, man-made stuff. It's all smoke and mirrors. I freaking love that. We got the frig here. Friggin' A. What is the frig? Go to friggin' night. Ooh. Yeah, I love these uh, custom walls and stuff. The normal maps and the detail. Oh. Look at that. We are in the belly of the beast. In the depths of the park. Oh my goodness, that is actually quite cool. Wow, look how nicely lit the park is as well. Not oversaturated, not overdone, quite subtle in most areas. The paths are really well lit. Phenomenal work. Okay, now we go through the rock cave and out we go. I really like walking these queues and exits, like nothing I've ever seen. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is the low key. Oh, that makes sense. I didn't see it. It was like submerged and now it has erected. Very cool. I am getting nauseous. Oh my goodness. I felt my stomach sink for a second there. <laughs> Okay, we gotta find our way to that junior. Absolutely. I love the way it traverses the terrain. And I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to get there. These people seem to be getting off of it. Wait, no. This is a completely different ride now. That's back to the Grand Library. Well, there's like restrooms and stuff back here. This might not just be an exit. Right. Yeah, they're walking up this way. So, so can we. And... What does that even say? <laughs> All right. Another super immersive queue. Didn't expect anything less at this point. I hope this is... Yes, it is. 
We found it. We found the junior. Look at all the uh, Q stalls. Very nicely done. I, I really like the interior in here. Valger? Slavger? <laughs> small, small duration on this. 70 seconds, 300 meters in length, but the integration is going to be like nothing you've ever seen before. We're going to, uh, we're going to go the look forward at the back. Very interesting as it launches. So definitely using mods. Let's check this out. Yeah, this is just absolutely wicked sick. I love how you've uh, used the mod to make it a launch coaster, building us up that speed immediately, shooting us out, and uh, we get to fly around the gardens like a little Viking dragon. Very cool. Let's check this out one more time in the track view so we can see the uh, coaster a little bit better. Here we go. I am just so impressed by this. I, I generally love these little junior dragons and what people do with them, the junior Wendigo as well. And this is probably the best integration I've ever seen. Basically, everywhere we go, every meter that we travel, we are just surrounded by incredible artistry. And generally, they're supposed to be short experiences, but that was a quality, quality experience there. You can see a look at it here from the exterior at how cool that is. Going up and over the pathways, in between the fences, down below into the uh, trenches there. Incredible. Okay, let's make our way over. Well, I guess we have the spinning coaster as well. Wait, did I go? I didn't go on the spinning coaster, did I? Um, but we also have a dive coaster. I'm feeling like... The queue for the spinning coaster has to be over here, but this park has been very misleading so far. The queues have been very far away from the actual stations. So maybe we just have to travel a little bit further out, unless I'm looking at the queue right here. I could definitely double back here. It has to be around here. That's the queue for Loki. No, I've definitely passed through everything you can. Well, I'll cheat if I have to, but I'm just gonna keep going forward and at the very least, try to hunt down the queue for the dive coaster here. It's the Valkyrie, I'm gonna assume. This is Odin that doesn't work, unfortunately. But we'll take a look at it, the coaster tracks and all that. It is packed, full load here, let's go. Amazing. We have arrived at the dive. What are we dealing with here with the Valkyrie? The max speeds of 70 miles per hour. The biggest drop on the first dive is gonna be about 50 meters. Four inversions on this. We're gonna go uh, seat view, middle seat for the most authentic. Wait, what the hell? What the heck is happening here? Okay, this is the, uh, it starts off by going right into uh, a dive. Amazing. We might be able to ride this at night as well. See the whole park from up top here at the uh, tower. And off we go.
just sort of had a small epiphany here. I think the Baldur's Gate 3 soundtrack would have worked perfectly for this park. And I think 99% of the songs, everything except for one song, is pretty much made by Larry and themselves. So in theory, you can use it without getting any copyright strikes. And I think that would have actually been incredible for this park. Part of me wants to add it into post, but it's kind of not right to do that without the creator's permission. So I'm gonna have to leave it as it is, but I think it would have elevated the experience just a little bit. Let's see this at nighttime now. Oh no. Oh no. Well, I guess we're gonna check it out in track view instead. So the day-night sequencer is forcing daytime on us. But we can check it out like this. Why not? I've been so taken back by all of the details of the cues, the theming, the surrounding details on the ride experiences themselves that I haven't really commented on the actual coaster designs. And I gotta say the layouts, the coaster elements used, everything about them has also been freaking spectacular. This must be a cue. Is it for a flat ride or have we found the cue to our spinning coaster, I wonder? Oh no, it's this thing up in the sky. We can take a look at it here. They get to like kind of stand up, look around. It's so silent. A little bit hard to view that though. All right, let me cheat and find the spinning coaster queue. Okay, here it is. I found it. Tucked off to the side there. I must have walked by it. I remember seeing the uh, sign there, but yeah, I just, I walked by it. Didn't quite see the uh, person there. Maybe a little bit easier to spot if there were less guests in the park. I love all the uh, woodwork textures and stuff on the walls. Yeah, this has a really cool look to it. And here we are, Ragnarok. Ooh, Ragnarok the spinning coaster. Here's a look at the ride results. If you'd like to see them, 90 seconds of duration, 350 meters in length, 35 miles per hour is the top speeds. We're gonna have to do a seat view. We can also check it out in track. Yeah, why not? Wow, really great precision and timing on the control of the actual spin. I really quite like that. Let's, uh, it gave us some pretty cool viewpoints of the other parts of the track and the other coasters as well as the park using the lock and unlock mechanism on the spinning ride itself. Let's check this out in track view and just ride the, the track.
Okay, amazing. Uh, one thing I just thought of, and this is more of a note to the creator themselves, Dorn Ice, uh, the day-night sequencer, I believe when you're using it, you were, when you get to the top of the lift, you were changing it to a certain time of day, right? I think if you leave it blank, it allows us to control that. So basically what you can do with these sequencers is um, if I have it set tonight, when we pop out, it will be night. But if I have it set to day, when we pop out, it will be day. But then all the other aspects, when you turn the lights off and when you turn them back on, when you want them to be controlled, it will be based off of your experience. So I guess as a point of feedback in the future is to uh, leave it a little bit more open-ended, only turn it to night when needed. That way I can ride them at both day and night and experience them multiple ways, if that makes sense. So that's uh, something maybe you could try out for next time. So I think we've hit up pretty much every ride and coaster in the park. I will double check the ride list in a second, but we did not get to check out Odin. And um, let me see if I can find the queue for that and we can at least try to get the experience of it. This is the exit. And I believe this is the entrance. Odin, shut down, out of service. But the queues have been so well crafted. Everything about this park has been really over the top that I feel like it would do this creator a uh, disservice if we didn't at least walk the queue and uh, try to take a closer look at the coaster itself, the ride stats on it and all that. I guess I don't even know if we can check the ride stats because it doesn't work, but we'll at least take a look at it. Looks to be like it's an inverted coaster as well. Real shame, I was really looking forward to riding this. The actual coaster elements and layout looks just over the top. But, oh, it's a flying coaster. Look at that, really great stuff. Okay, so does it show us any ride results? It does. Gives us the track length of 800 meters, 51 miles per hour is its top speeds. The biggest drop is 25 meters and seven inversions. These are the leftover stats from when Dwarren tested it on their computer, but I can show you guys what happens with this. So it drops down here. Now, for whatever reason, you can see if I select the track, it ends. Like this part is not part of the coaster. So, there's a separate piece here that's separate from the coaster. Viper 1. There's like two coasters there. And it just drops back down. So there's something janky going on with, uh... They use the mod. And because I don't have that mod installed, it's not working for me, but... I don't know why, because most of the modded coasters work. All of these coasters have used mods and all of them have worked. Um, so I don't really know what the reasoning behind that is. It could be just uh, a, a particular set of mods not working nicely together. But when you guys are creating these modded coasters, just upload them to the workshop. Ask anybody on the Discord um, to give it a try. Give it a ride, see if it's working for them, just to ensure that everything is okay once it gets chosen for Spotlight. Um, because there's nothing more unfortunate than not being able to go on one of the ride experiences that you spend so much time working on. So I just want to kind of give you guys a flyby of the coaster track itself to somewhat simulate the ride experience. And as you can see, the coaster layout, design, and elements all look over the top incredible as they have been so far on all of the uh, creations here today. Really amazing stuff here. Yeah, the in intricacies on how all these coaster networks are working together is phenomenal. An over-the-top theme park experience through and through by Dwar and Ice here today. And there it is, the Odin Coaster. So let me hit the ride list and just double check that we didn't miss anything before I give my final thoughts. I just noticed something for the first time looking at this ride list. I didn't even notice that this was a thing in terms of theme park management. You can sort by uh, customers last month. Valkyrie is the most popular ride in the whole park. 
that being the dive coaster. Zeus is in second here, and I think that is our giga coaster that sp spans across the whole parking lot. Uh, pretty cool. You can kind of see what the AI is weighted towards, I guess, because of the uh, prestige of the coasters, the coaster results, the stats, everything that's added up in the back end, uh, giving the coaster rating and all of that, what the guests are most interested in going on. So I don't know. I just thought that was a fun random stat that maybe we could look at the end of parks in the future to see. I always kind of like pick what my favorite coaster was and why, but this is fun because we get to see what the guest's favorite coaster is uh, for, for whatever reason. <laughs> we don't really know the reason, but they have chosen and nominated Valkyrie as their favorite coaster. Boy, oh boy, for me to pick a favorite here, it's pretty tough. Personally, I'm, I'm going to go with like the one right out of the rip, the uh, Librarian's Apprentice. It just really set the tone of what my expectations would be for the rest of the park. Uh, we were going through the different eras of time. Time travel is a thing of my per personal favorite thing of mine. I love all time travel video games, movies, stories, that sort of thing. And I I just think it took us on an experience and set the tone. Yeah, uh, what for in terms of like coaster layout design and all that may not have been as crazy as some of the other ones we went on, but I personally enjoyed it from all the thematic reasons. Other than that, oh man, I like them all for different reasons. I really, really do yeah part of me wants to pick the giga coaster but i can't because i just feel like it, it was so awesome it has so much airtime it's just an immediate awesome coaster it's a give me so I, I feel like i have to pick something else for some uh other reason and for that reason i'm gonna go with the junior the junior uh dragon while it you know didn't have a whole lot of length to it we only popped out here for a bit it was so well integrated weaving in and out of that terrain a family friendly experience like nothing you've ever seen before i just absolutely love how this weaves in and out of everything it's phenomenal might not have the most coaster elements the craziest layout or design but sometimes less is more and it's got me for the less is more award <laughs> yep absolutely amazing do we uh oh that's the librarian's apprentice there was a lot of tra track length to this as we popped out it was uh over an hour ago it was a good mixture between coaster and dark ride and storytelling absolutely that's going to be my favorite right there what was your favorite coaster and why and what did you guys think of dwarn's ice uh D dwarn dwarn ice's mythica land of the mythics and legends fire away down in the comments below was this not one of the most realistic detailed extravagant parks you have ever seen on this channel let me know down below dwarn ice you knocked it out of the park again my only feedback for you in going into any future creations or if you were to update this park definitely think you should update it for anyone that downloads it to fix the odin coaster so people without the mods uh can get this to work and if you can't get that to work at least provide instructions on how to download and install the mods on your workshop page and lastly i definitely think adding a little bit of ambience ambient speakers throughout the the pathways uh choosing specialized songs for your coasters i would highly recommend looking into the boulders gate 3 ost you can find it on youtube if you have a program like umi you can just download it uh, and you can get the mp3s that way i also have the mp3s so if you want to just message me i can send you my ost uh, mp3s and you can attach some of them to your rides and attractions uh, as i do feel like the baller's gate music fits very very well with what we're seeing here and I, I think that would have just taken the experience over the top for me visually speaking though one of the most detailed ridiculously detailed parks i've ever seen great use of theme maker toolkit as well some of the best i've ever seen and it was definitely worth the 45 minutes of downloading custom assets uh just a quick look at it here if we go to the toolkit items this i had cleared out my toolkit items before making this video so everything that you see here was used in this very park alone that is ridiculous that is a lot of things that had to be downloaded to get this park to open up and run and uh for this creator to sift through and build everything the way that they did it paid off in the end and uh created for a very realistic experience overall so give it up to door dice ladies and gentlemen an absolute legend in the making you're currently sitting at expert builder i'm gonna go ahead and go to discord right now and promote you to master builder based off this very creation alone and your name is recognizable i know i featured you in the past and i know i've ranted and raved about your creations so you're absolutely deserving of that master creation not just on this creation alone but with this creation to what i've seen from you in the past so there it is ladies and gentlemen give it up for our new master builder dward ice let them know what you thought about their park down in the comments below and that's going to do it for us in today's episode of Park Spotlight. Hope you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one.
Bye now.